Hey guys, in this quick video, I want to discuss with you whether or not cordyceps, the medicinal mushroom, is a risk factor for worsening prostate cancer. So earlier today, like most days, we received some emails with some herbal and health related questions. And one particular person wrote sharing an article, this scientific study here, that talks about cordyceps promoting the growth of prostate cancer cells. And their email read something along the lines of, you know, I'm 75 years old and I suffer from prostate issues or an enlarged prostate. I supplement with cordyceps, it's one of my favorite herbs, but after seeing this study, I'm wondering whether or not I should give up cordyceps and give any credit to this study or if it's something that I shouldn't have to worry about. So naturally, I looked into the study, I read through it and very quickly was able to give this person an answer. In both their question, this study, and the answer I provided I thought would be a really good topic for a video to share with all of you. After all, prostate health is a hot topic here on our channel, men's health in general, and of course, cordyceps being one of my personal favorite herbs, in a really well studied herb, I thought that this would be a very interesting video to make. It also points out some of the major flaws that can occur and why you can't trust every single study that you see online. You have to really piece a lot of these studies together you can't just make an assumption based off of one study without connecting many, many dots. So that's what I did here for this person and I wanna share with you more along the lines of what I shared with them. But really quick, what I'd like to do first is briefly read through this study. It's really short, so it'll only take a quick second. So that way you can see how these conclusions were made. So this study basically aims to determine whether cordyceps, one of the most expensive Asian nutrient supplements, might stimulate the growth of prostate cancer cells. And here were the results that they found. Firstly, cordyceps significantly elevated testosterone levels. The second thing that they found out was that the prostate glands were significantly enlarged. They also noticed that cell viability was increased twofold in the androgen responsive prostate cancer cell line. Now here's where things get really, really interesting. And if you were to overlook this one sentence, just a couple of words here, this would change the entire outcome of this course and make you very well think that cordyceps and testosterone are what cause prostate cancer. But they leave out some of the data here. You see, in the study they say that this promoting effect disappeared after adding bicalutamide, which is a so-called anti-androgen drug. So what they're trying to promote here is that cordyceps boosts testosterone, and testosterone acts on the androgen receptors in the prostate, causing it to grow. So in fewer words, cordyceps equals more testosterone, and testosterone equals prostate enlargement and cancer. Then they go on to try to verify this by saying if we add in this anti-androgen drug, so that way the androgen receptors in the prostate are not functioning and can't take in testosterone, then it goes away to sort of try to verify that it must be androgens and testosterone. However, if we quickly glance at this study on the effects of bicalutamide therapy on prolactin response to L-DOPA in prostate cancer patients, this study basically found that the so-called anti-androgen also may reduce prolactin level secretion and improve the secretion response to L-DOPA. So in other words, bicalutamide, like other anti-androgen drugs, tend to also lower prolactin and boost dopamine. And dopamine actually is an antagonist to prolactin, so through boosting dopamine, it's also going to lower prolactin levels as well. So again, that piece of data is the most fundamental piece of data in the entire study, and it's sort of just washed over really fast. They don't mention that it's also an anti-prolactin drug. And as I talk about in pretty much every video we've ever made on prostate health, it's not androgens that cause prostate cancer. It's estrogen and prolactin. So if you haven't yet already, be sure to watch this video on the true causes of prostate cancer. I talk about the studies in there where they basically determine that it's estrogen and not testosterone that causes prostate cancer. And in fact, there's even other studies I share on how DHT, the potent form of testosterone in combination with vitamin D3, actually reverses prostate cancer. So if you're concerned about cordyceps causing prostate cancer, I wouldn't be so concerned about it because this this study is basically saying that the reason cordyceps cause cancer is because it boosted testosterone. So I'm not sure how they get away with saying that, you know, the prostate was enlarged after supplementing with cordyceps, but then it wasn't once they added in the anti-androgen drug. For me, that would only verify that it's not androgens, but it's probably the anti-prolactin effects of that drug that stopped that from occurring. The fact of the matter is, 
Testosterone is the most basic anti-aging hormone that is in your body, one of the most anti-aging hormones. All of your androgen hormones tend to decline with age, yet all of the incidences of prostate cancer and disease tend to be most elevated when your androgen levels are at their lowest. So I think that in of itself is the most common sense way to look at it and to sort of prove that it can't possibly be androgens. Somewhere along the lines, these studies are not being entirely honest. I would say there's something about these studies that are not being exposed or shared with you. And hopefully this video has helped to, you know, peel back a couple of layers and help you see a larger picture and how that might be done. But generally speaking, I wouldn't be concerned about taking cordyceps. If anything, testosterone has a protective effect on the entire body and the health of the prostate. And since this study is basically confirming that cordyceps boost testosterone, I would just make my own conclusions if I were you from that point. Anyways, that's all I wanted to share in this video. Hopefully it brought some insight and has helped you out. And if you were the guy that asked this question, hopefully this provided even more thorough explanation than what I explained in the email. Otherwise, for anybody else watching, if you've enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are new here. And if you're interested in looking at some of these studies for yourself or learning more about cordyceps or even supplementing with it for all of its proven health benefits, you can check all of that out in the description box below.